Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries where as you can see I have refitted the Dynastart to the bike and I've done that for a couple of reasons that I'll run you through in just a couple of moments. So why have I refitted the Dynastart? Well number one I wanted to see what kind of speed this would turn the engine over at when there's absolutely zero compression. Okay there's maybe a tiny bit of crankcase compression because uh, this is a, a one inch bore breather. Um, um, but apart from that, there, there's absolutely zero compression. So all we're asking the Dynastart to do is to overcome the internal friction of the bearings and that type of thing and the, the piston against the sleeve and the sleeve against the contraction ring, but not a lot. And if that's a sufficiently high speed, it means we can go back to using the Dynastart when we've made our new head. The idea is that we have a, a really large decompressor in the head, so there's effectively very little or no compression. We crank the engine over at quite a high speed and then snap the decompressor shut just at the right moment and the inertia of the rotating 50 kilograms of mass plus the weight of the rod and the piston will take it over top dead center at which point the ignition is energized and it's like giving it a big kick but with an electrically assisted starter uh, kickstart if you like uh, for, for want of a better way of putting it so I wanted to see what kind of speed we'd get from the Dynastart that's the first um, question and the second question would be do we think we can get away with a slightly larger sprocket on the front this is a, a 14 tooth sprocket against 48 on here so we're about one to three and a half in terms of a reduction and this will be driven at three and a half times engine speed to give us a dynamo output so if we can gear this uh, down less or gear it up slightly depends on on your viewpoint so perhaps go up to 19 or even 24 teeth on the front sprocket here on the driving sprocket it means we get a greater rotational speed of the engine for starting so i'm going to pop around the other side it's all wired up ready to go i'm going to pop around the other side and press the button um, and you'll see what sort of speed we get so here we are around the other side where I can access the uh, the button to uh, engage the Dynastart um, and this is what we get. <laughs> That's a reasonable speed of rotation at the moment. Everything is stone cold. I know it's minus one outside, so it is all cold in England, but these wires are stone cold. So we're not, we're not asking much of this motor. I think things get warm when you try and stop the motor from turning, but when it's allowed to spin freely, uh, everything is absolutely stone cold here, which is quite reassuring. And that's quite a good rotational speed. What I'll do, I'll make another video from the other side. Or is this the side? Because that was the other side, so maybe this is just the side. Mm, I'll, I'll work on that. I'll make another video from here. So I'll put a chalk mark across there, run a stopwatch at the top, and then take a slow motion video. So it'll give us a really accurate RPM value. Um, but I think at the moment, it looks quite promising that we can go back to using the Dynastart rather than using the starter motor. And I'm quite chuffed with that because although the starter motor does have more torque and it does have more speed, that's the starter motor from the car i think that looks a much more elegant solution the um the dynastart looks about right there whereas the starter motor did look a little bit heath robinson a little bit bodgy and this has got a built-in charging solution even though we have a charging solution for which the video was made just the other day it's still up on the bin bench press there um draw press sorry um i think the the dynastart looks better so there we go that's the plan that's the weekend so the rest of it will come probably next weekend. As usual, thank you for watching. More updates or follow.